Now, let's abstract our key ideas. So what have we done so far? We've looked at five different chance experiments in very commonplace settings, throwing dice, balls and ends, and coins, and abstracted three critical features. This, then, should be at the heart of a theory of chance. Again, think of geometry as a metaphor. We start with an idea of geometric principles by experimentation, by building. But eventually, we cut loose the trappings of reality and abstract out clean, mathematical, sanitized elements. Lines, planes, arcs, circles, points from these physical entities. But by cutting loose the vestiges of reality, we allow ourselves to focus on the logical heart of the problem. In very much the same spirit, we are going to try to extract from these examples the key ideas, which will then allow us to abstract away the reality and look at a mathematical structure. Once we have such a structure, we can examine its properties, its logical consequences, and its predictions, just as we do in Euclidean geometry by proving theorems once we have a basic axiomatic setup in place. And finally, to close the loop, we will then see where these results fit in, in applications in a diverse range of settings. So this is our game plan, but we are jumping ahead. Immediately, what have we done so far? Let's look at the principles we've identified. So this is a summary, chance in commonplace settings. Chance experiments are governed by outcomes. These outcomes are chance driven, they are not a priori predictable. And we began by looking at outcomes which are constrained to be in a finite collection of outcomes. This was a natural setting of combinatorial probabilities. And then we moved on to look at settings where we have more than a finite collection, in fact, potentially infinite collections of outcomes. The first question in a chance experiment for you should always be, can I identify the collection of feasible outcomes of the experiment, either explicitly by writing them all down, of course you can only do this if this is finite, or implicitly where you see a pattern and using that pattern you can completely describe a generic outcome. That is always the first question. What are the conceptual outcomes of the underlying chance experiment? With this in hand, the next question is, what are the events of interest to me? And if you go back and look at our examples, every event is identifiable by a subcollection of the possible outcomes, by an aggregate of the possible outcomes. Your next question then should be, can I model my chance problem mathematically, compactly, identify the outcomes, and then identify the set, the sub-collection of those outcomes which trigger the events of interest to me. This is always the next step in the program. The final step in the program is, once I've identified the subset of interest to me, what is the chance or the probability I want to ascribe to it? And here we will inevitably resort to this wonderful transcendent principle of additivity. Our success in solving problems and coming up with chance estimates which are accurate is going to devolve critically again and again upon our ability to take a raw problem, an event, and partition it, break it up into pieces which are logically cohesive. Of course, I cannot tell you in advance how to break up a generic event. That is going to be what the problem has to tell us. But each problem will inform us of the way to think about it. And once we identify a clean partition, we resort to additivity and put the whole together by simply adding up the pieces. This is the starting point for the development of a rich and fecund theory. And this was a path that Andrei Kolmogorov followed in 1933, when he laid down an axiomatic basis for the science of probability. This will be the content of our next lecture.